So there are basically only three inverse trig functions. So even though we have, we have the three basic trig functions, sine, cosine, and tangent, and then we have their um, reciprocals, cosecant, secant, and cotangent. When it comes to inverse trig functions, we only have three. We have the inverse of sine, cosine, and tangent. We don't have any inverses of the other three. We don't have special symbols for that or anything. You just have to remember that it's the reciprocal, so it's basically the, the same sort of thing. So we indicate the inverse trig functions by either arc or with negative one as an exponent. So I traditionally use arc. So I will say arc sine, arc cosine, arc tangent. Um, but most calculators use the negative one symbol. So it's important to know that th these mean the same thing. So I traditionally say arc because I don't want it to get confused with taking the reciprocal. Because when we have exponents, usually a negative one exponent means a reciprocal. But in this case, we're not using it as a reciprocal. So sine to the negative one of x is not one over sine of x. It means the inverse sine or arc sine. So I use arc sine just so that that doesn't get confused. But your calculator will use the other symbol. So it's important to know how to go between those. Now the arc part comes from the fact that when you take the inverse of a trig function, you're getting out an angle. So when you have trig functions, if you think about it on a triangle, usually it will give you some ratio of the sides of a triangle. The inverse is you're basically giving it the sides of a triangle and then you're finding the angle that's associated with it. So it's doing the opposite. Your answer is always going to be an angle that comes out of the arc sine, arc cosine, arc tangent. So here it gives you an angle versus you're plugging in an angle. So you're actually plugging in a number that's not an angle. It's basically a ratio. So just to do this um, with some known values. We're going to find some inverse trig functions based off of the unit circle because these, you know, we have, um, you know, we have the results here. We have a unit circle. We can find these exactly. And then you can verify with your calculator as well. So the first one we've got is arc sine of square root of 2 over 2. So this is saying what angle gives us a sine of square root of 2 over 2. So that is how you want to read this when you're trying to figure it out without a calculator. I just move my keyboard. So what angle gives square root of 2 over 2 for sine? That's, that's basically what this is asking for. So you're going to go to your unit circle and we basically try to work in the first quadrant whenever possible. And you're going to say, OK, what angle has sine as square root of 2 over 2? So that is right here, which is pi over 4. So if you take the arc sine of square root of 2 over 2, you will get pi over 4 as your answer. And so that would be the exact value. And when we do this, we always do this in radians. When you're trying to do it exactly, you're always going to give the radian version. And this is really important for when you guys go on to calculus, because anytime you see these types of functions, you always assume it's radians. Sometimes if you're finding it on a calculator, it's easier to get it as a degree because it's easier to understand um, and then convert to radians. But if it's like an exact value, for sure you want to do it in radians. So for arc cosine of negative one half, we're asking what angle gives negative one half for cosine? So you're saying, okay, which one is which? You know, like what angle do you get? So we have two values where the so cosine is the x value. We have two possible answers here. There are two of them. 
But when you're finding the inverse of cosine, we don't get two answers. We only get one answer. And we're going to assume the ones in the positive um, y quadrant. So we're going to assume that we're going to be looking at everything basically on the top half, everything for positive y. So here, for a cosine of negative 1 half, we're going to say we're going to use 2 pi over 3. So there's two answers, but we generally assume the one that's in the top half of the quadrant. Now, arctan of square root of 3 over 3. So this is a little trickier because with tangent, um, we don't have the tangents on our graph here. We have cosines and sines, but we don't have tangent. And we are looking at what um, angle gives us a tangent of square root of 3 over 3. So tangent of what angle is square root of 3 over 3? So this is actually the same thing as saying 1 over the square root of 3, if that makes it easier for you. Um, that's how I find it easier, is to think of it instead of square root of 3 over 3, 1 over the square root of 3, because then I can actually kind of look on our unit circle to find where that is. Because tangent is sine over cosine. So I want to look for something where my cosine has a square root of 3 and my sine has a 1, and um, on our circle, we've got several things where that's involved, but we have like a denominators of two, but those cancel out. So this is the only one, or, or we could potentially have this one right here. So we've got the first quadrant, where if you took your sine over your cosine, your denominators cancel, you get one over square root of three. Or you have in quadrant three, where they're both negative, because the negatives would cancel out. And then you would end up with the same thing, 1 over the square root of 3. So again, we generally assume that we're going to be in the positive for our quadrants. And so your answer here would then be the angle, the pi over 6. So that is for saying what angle gives us that ratio, essentially. And so the arctan is pi, I said pi over 6 and wrote pi over 3, pi over 6. So um, I, I don't expect you guys to have to do these by hand like this. This is just a demonstration so that you can, you understand what it's telling you, basically. But for the most part, you're, use, you're going to be using inverse trig functions, using a calculator, because you'll be solving problems with them. And so you don't have to do these by, you know, by hand with the unit circle. But if you do want to check your answers with a calculator, you can, because we have above your sine, cosine, and tangent buttons, um, there are the inverse buttons where it's to the negative 1. And it's the same thing depending on whether you're on, on a graphing calculator or regular calculator. So I'm, I've got both in front of me, actually. <laughs> so I've got my TI-30X, where I have buttons for sine, cosine, and tangent. And then I have my graphing calculator, where I don't have buttons for either one, but I can use my second button or the diamond button to get to them. So you can check your answers with that. I recommend when you check your answers, actually put it in a degree mode, because it's a lot easier to interpret that than it is to get some like decimal value because my calculator, um, generally, if I'm going to take, so let's see, if I take the arc tan, I'm going to use my graphing calculator, and I do square root of 3 over 3. Okay, so my graphing calculator will give me it in radians, and it says pi over 6. But my... Um, TI-30 calculator, if I put in the same thing and it's on radian mode, it gives it to me as a decimal. 
So whether you use degree mode or radian mode would really depend on your calculator. So if you just have a basic scientific calculator, I would recommend having it on degree mode because it's easier than looking at some decimal and trying to figure out what fraction of pi that is. But if you have a graphing calculator, then you can just use it in radian mode and it will tell you all together. It will just tell you flat out what it's going to be. And I'm actually going to pull up Desmos for people that might be using the Desmos calculator. Um, I want the scientific calculator here. So the Desmos calculator, you, you see sine, cosine, tangent. To get to the inverse ones, you need to go to the function button here. And so let's do that last one, the arctan. Uh, let's see, square root of three. I'm going to make sure all my parentheses are correct. Square root of three over three. Okay. So you can see the Desmos calculator will give it to you in degrees because I'm in degree mode. If I change to radians, it gives it to you as a decimal. So then you would have to convert that um, to some sort of fraction of pi. So if you're using the Desmos calculator, I would recommend keeping it in degree mode. It's a lot easier to convert 30 degrees to pi over 6 than it is to figure out that this is pi over 6. Just as an FYI, this is not easy to figure out. So get to know which calculator to use so you know whether you should be in degree mode or um, radian mode, but in general, if it's if it's a real world problem, we'll give our answers in degrees, but if it's just like a, uh, there's no application with it, you'll want it in radians. And so you may have to do some additional conversion if you're using a calculator like this to know, okay, I have to give my answer is pi over six. So just an FYI there that each calculator is, di is different and Desmos is great, but it, some things like this are just <laughs> so I just want, to, want you to be aware of that. So are there any questions so far? Okay. So here's three. We're going to evaluate these using a calculator because these are not traditional numbers that you see from the unit circle. So you're going to use a calculator to evaluate these. And I'm going to do them both. Um, I'm going to show you, you know, how to convert it into radians if you have your calculator in degree mode. Um, so we're going to first do it in degree mode. So I'm going to start with arc sine of point six five. So on the calculator, I'm going to use the inverse sine button. And I just simply type in 0.65 and I'm in degree mode. So when I'm in degree mode, it's going to give me 40.54160187. So it's about 40 degrees. So that would be, you need to melt, tell that this is about, we'll say, a, a 40.5 degrees. So if you're giving your answer in degrees, you need to use the degree symbol so that it's clear that that is degrees. If you don't use the degree symbol, we assume it's radians, and then that's not the same thing. So that's what my calculator gives in degree mode. So I'm going to use radian mode now. And I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to use it on both of my calculators, my, my scientific calculator and the graphing calculator, so that you can see what they may give you. So in radian mode, when I take the inverse, I get 0.70758443, and that basically goes on forever. So we would say this is about 0.71 radians. I've noticed some people are struggling with the, the rounding. So if I want two decimal places, that seven after my second decimal place is telling me I have to round up. So it's 0.71. You can't just ignore the decimals. You, when you're rounding, you need to make sure you round up one appropriate, which is five or higher. So in radians, 
on my scientific calculator, it gives me this very long decimal. And then I'm going to do the same thing on my graphing calculator, which is in radian mode. And it gives me basically the same decimal because this is not something that comes out as an easy fraction of pi. So it's not one of our special angles. So if it's not a special angle, we usually just leave it as a decimal. So I, my graphing calculator gives me 0 0.707584, not as many decimals, just based off of how I have it set up. So generally, in a problem like this, we want to give our answer as radians, unless it's a real world problem. So you want to have it in radian mode. And if possible, you want to convert it to some sort of uh, fraction of pi if you can. Now, I don't know how many of you watched my video that I shared a couple days ago about the Casio calculator that randomly turned some value into a fraction of pi. It, this is a case where I kind of wish that our calculators did that because <laughs> that was some weird fluke and it did it when it doesn't make sense. But this is a, a situation where it would make sense to kind of figure out some sort of fraction of pi and approximate it. But it's a lot of work to do that on your ha by hand. So we're not going to do that, obviously. But I just saw a connection to what we were talking about with that video that I sent out earlier. So that's arc sign. So we're going to do the same thing for arc cosine and arc tangent. So I just like to do it in degree mode just to see if it's a special, you know, if it is one of these our special angles, just in case, because sometimes, oops, sometimes you can't tell from the decimal whether it's a special angle or not. So I'm going to do these in both. So when we take the inverse cosine, of negative 0.7, we got 134.427004. So this is about 134.4 degrees. So remember, this is giving you the angle. So it's giving you what it is in degrees. But if you're in radians, you get a totally different answer. You get 2.34619. Yeah, that's good enough. <laughs> Just round, round that properly. So you get about 2.35 radians. So when you're solving problems that involve the inverse trig functions, it's really important to know what mode you're in. Because if you're getting answers that don't make sense, you may be in the wrong mode. So most of the time when you're solving, we assume radian mode. So just an FYI that we assume radian mode and then you go from there. Because otherwise, if you're in the wrong mode, it could totally mess things up. So again, I'm going to just do the same thing with arc tangent, so you can see the difference. If I do it in degree mode, and I'm going to just around already, it's about 87.7 degrees. But if you do it in radians, you get 1.53 approximately. So there any questions so far? Okay, so you can graph inverse trig functions. Um, generally, we never graph them. They're, they don't form anything interesting. You know, like the trig functions, they repeat forever. They have a pattern. The inverse trig functions don't do that. Like if you graph these in Desmos, actually, let me pull up Desmos and go to the graphing calculator. I'm going to just graph arc sine or inverse sine. 
that's all you see. So it's it doesn't go on forever. It literally just has a very small section where it's graphed. It has a set domain, a set range, and then that's it. Doesn't go on forever. We can do arc cosine. And same thing. It's just a set range. It's between two numbers, and it just doesn't go on forever. The only one that does is arc tan, the tangent. Oops. So that's the only one it does, but it doesn't have a repeating pattern or anything like that. So it just, it sort of, it looks like, well, you've got horizontal asymptotes here and here. And then that's about it. So we don't generally graph the inverse trig functions, but they're useful for determining the domain and range. So especially the range part, because when you're trying to find inverse trig functions, you need to have your output within a certain um, angle or so. So for like arc sine, you want your answers, any answers that to be between negative pi over 2 or pi over 2. For cosine, it's between 0 and pi. And then for tangent, it's also between negative pi over 2 and pi over 2. So those are helpful for de determining what values you pick. So if we go back to here, so we had two possibilities for our arctan, but according to the range for our graph, we want it between negative pi over 2 and pi over 2. So you would be essentially, you would want to make sure whatever answer you pick is on this side of your unit circle. So um, sine, arc sine is also on this side of the unit circle. And then arc cosine is on this side. So that's why I said generally that you want to be above. Now it's not the same. Um, the arc sine and arc tangent are not all above the x axis, but for the most part, if you have to choose, you're always going to be picking the one in the first quadrant. So uh, basically, if you have multiple answers on the unit circle for your angle, you're going to pick that first quadrant whenever possible. Otherwise, you're either going to be looking at quadrant four or quadrant two, depending on the function. But most of the time, we're just using a calculator to do this. So that's not super important. It's just to kind of give you an idea. So if you do have to do these by hand, you know kind of what answers make sense. But again, not requirement calculators do it just fine so compositions of inverse trig functions so basically because they're inverses they undo each other so if you're taking the sine of an arc sine or an arc sine of a sine they just cancel out same thing with the cosines and then with the tangent so this is what we do when we're solving equations that involve trig functions so i do have a video in the video section of the class on solving using trig functions. So that would be a great video to watch after this so that you can see how you use those inverse trig functions to solve. But we're using the, the idea that they basically cancel out. So like on the homework on uh, problem five, you have something with a sine. So you're going to want to take the arc sine to undo it, to basically cancel it out. And you do need to do that on both sides of the equation, because whatever you do on one side, you always have to do on the other side. So here we're going to use some of these properties here, and I'm going to um, actually go back. So our tangent, remember, it needs to be between negative pi over 2, pi over 2. Same thing with sine or output here. So we just want to remember that. And then the cosine is between 0 and pi. So just kind of noting that just as a reminder of what we're allowed to put in and take out and all that. So 45 degrees, or if it's 45, I shouldn't say oh, that's that's not degrees. That's in radians. It doesn't have the degree symbol. <laughs> I almost was like, oh, this is really easy, you know. So arctan 
of 45. Basically, the tangent and the arc tan, those cancel out. So your answer here is just 45. And you can do this on your calculator. So you can type in the tangent and then the arc tangent and then 45. And it actually doesn't matter whether you're in degree mode or radian mode because they just cancel out. So it doesn't matter whether you're in degree or radian, you're going to get the same answer. You're going to get 45. So here was sine and arc sine. So we should get negative 0.2. So you can also verify that on your calculator. And you get negative 0.2 when you plug that in. So now we've got arc cosine cosine. So you would think, oh, those just cancel. I should get negative 3 pi over 2. But if you were to put that on your calculator, and I'm going to use my graphing calculator for this one. So if I do the inverse cosine and then cosine of negative 3 pi over 2. So if I did this on my calculator, I actually get pi over 2. And why is that? Well, this is because it's not in our range. Negative 3 pi over 2 is not between 0 and pi. It's outside of that, that range of arc cosine, because arc cosine has a range from 0 to pi. And we got an answer that's not in there. So if you try to get the other angle, so let's say you have negative 3 pi over 2 and you add 2 pi to it, you do get pi over 2. And then that matches with what the calculator says. So just be careful um, if you're trying to do these by hand that you do have to think about the range. But that's why I say just rely on the calculator because the calculator will do that for you. You don't have to worry about it. There's no reason that you really need to be doing this by hand. Um, you know, just unless you really want to test yourself. But I'm doing this by hand just to kind of show you guys how this works and why you don't get negative 3 pi over 2. You know, it's good to have an understanding of why the calculator gives you what it gets, you know. Do you guys have any questions so far? Yes, Brian. I can't figure out how to get my calculator to pop up the pi thing. I'll get uh, decimals. What um, calculator do you, are you using? It's the app for the TI-80 something on the my app. phone. Yeah. Okay. Let's I see. downloaded the app. I haven't bought the calculator yet. Okay. I didn't know there was. How much? Is that free? No, I had to pay for it. Oh, okay. <laughs> Let's see. So I don't have the app on my phone. So I can't um basically tell you what to do on your phone but i can show you if like how to convert your decimal answer into how to figure it out by hand until you figure for, it out for that one and or the arc cosine negative three pi over two mm -hmm. i in um radian well let's see i think at first i had it in uh i think at first i had it in degree mode and didn't realize it so for radian mode, it would have been 1.570796 and a bunch of more numbers after that. Yes. Yeah. So and uh, you do get two different answers depending on if you're radian right. or not. In degree so. mode, it was 4.712388. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, okay. So let's do, whoops. Well, well how do you normally? We just set up a graphing calculator because the app is like identical to an actual calculator when you pull it up. Um, my graphing calculator has... Well, we try that first. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'm going to attempt to share my graphing calculator in, in a way that hopefully you can see it. So at the very bottom, um, here it says Rad Auto. I don't know if you can see that or how well you can see that. Actually, let me make sure 
that I'm sharing the camera. Okay, because sometimes like if someone's talking, it likes to change the camera. Okay, so um, mine defaults to radiant mode. It's just what I use all the time. But if you hit the mode button right, right. there. That's where I'm in. I'm in mode right now. Okay, and I'm trying to, there it goes. Okay, so you see where it says angle and it's set to radian. So you would just use the this and make sure it's in radians. And then the other thing that you might need to do, and I'm trying to make sure this focuses, um, does not want to focus. How do I get this? <laughs> okay, well, I gotta find it first and then I'll see if I can get it focused. The other thing is I have it set up Let's see, I have display digits as float, um, pretty print on. So also at the bottom, how do I get this to focus? Yeah, it does not want to focus. But at the very bottom on there, I have pretty print on. And I think if you make sure that's on, it will default to trying to make it in. Oh, that might you might want to have that on. And if you keep scrolling down, there's an option that says exact slash approx, and I have that set to auto, which means whenever possible, I'll try to, to give you the exact option. So that might need be what you need. Okay. I don't think I'm seeing that stuff. Yeah, I had to just keep yeah. scrolling down. Um, I'm saying I don't think I see it on the calculator. I oh, I may not have that option. Yeah, it's okay. I guess we'll go the other way. You show me how to convert it. Yes. <laughs> yes. Or but maybe try I'm, to find some other calculator then. I might just have to order one. Yeah, because if you're going to calculus, a graphing calculator will be very, very handy. If And I think most of you guys have to go to calculus. If you don't have to go to calculus, it's not worth the money. But if you do have to take calculus, I would recommend it. I believe I do have calculus next okay so so if we're going to do this by hand this gave me 1.5707963 which ones do you to convert from the degree mode or the radian uh, mode the radian mode's easier to convert yes definitely okay. radian mode because to convert it this is in radians all you need to do is divide that number by pi. And then it says that you get, when you divide by pi, you get one half. So that means your answer is pi over two. You basically take whatever that value is and multiply it by pi. So the one, that big long number, just do yep. answer divided by pi. Yep. And hit enter and it says 0 0.5. Yes. Which is supposed so, to know it's one half. Yes. So then and I would then, take the 0 0.5 and just put Pi on the in the numerator. Exactly. That's exactly right. Okay. Yeah. Let's actually do this with one of the other problems. Um, those were all. Let's see. So these all came out. Let's say I did the arc tangent one on my calculator, and I was in radian mode, but my calculator did, didn't give it to me as exact. So if I do that, it gives me 0 0.5235987766. So if I divide that by pi, it gives me 0 0.166 repeating. Now the nice thing is in my calculator that there is a way to turn that into a fraction. So, and on the graphing calculator, I know for sure there's one. Uh, it's under, what is it under? I have the TI-84, and if you go math, enter, enter, it'll turn into a fraction. Ah, <laughs> this is the problem. There's so many different calculators. So, Matt, oh, I'm going to see if that works on mine, too. Now I need to get actually a decimal. <laughs> okay. So one divided by six. And math, enter, enter. 
Oh, okay. It doesn't work so well. I have an 89, and that didn't work out that way. <laughs> but that's an option. Um, yeah, but most graphing calculators, they can convert decimals to fractions. So then I would do that and just convert to a fraction, whichever way your calculator does it. Yes. Yeah, I don't know. It's been so long since I've used this graphing <laughs> calculator. I don't even know how to convert a decimal into a fraction. Yeah, so uh, I'm trying to find it on my... Yeah, I'm... I... On my calculator, yeah, the, the math enter enter works if it didn't already round it. I would have to do, so if it rounds it, I think I have to do math enter enter. And then I think I have to make sure that I say answer and not like try to type in the answer. Yeah, there it works. So math enter enter and then type ants. <laughs> <laughs> or use that little button. Where do I find them? Math, enter, enter. So math, you'd have to hit the second button above five. That's in blue. And then you just hit enter, enter. And then to get the answer, whatever you calculated previously, that's above the negative symbol. Okay. Let me write that down. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> I feel like half of this week is just trying to figure out our calculators. <laughs> and that'll convert it to, or to a fraction for me? Yes, yeah, and then you just put pi on top. Okay, that works. Thanks. Yep, that's... Important stuff to know. <laughs> okay, so that's there. Okay, so now we're going to move into something a little different to kind of get your brains thinking and to kind of think about how this all works. We want to find the exact value of each expression. And so we've got the sine of arctan of three-fourths. So these don't cancel out. <laughs> so we have to kind of draw triangles. That's how I do this, is I draw a triangle. So I draw a right triangle, and then I just pick one angle, one to be my, my angle here. And so arctan of 3, 4 says what angle gives us an answer of 3 over 4 for tangent? So tangent 3 over 4, that's sine over cosine. So if we make our hypotenuse one, let's see, let's think about this. So we're saying what angle gives us three over four? Sine over cosine, sine opposite over hypotenuse, cosine opposite over hypotenuse. Yeah, so I can do one. And then let's call sine the opposite is three. And then cosine is the adjacent is four. And so we've got some angle there. So I just kind of filled in my, my triangle. I'm not actually going to find what that angle is, because then that gives us some angle because arctan gives us the angle. So you just kind of fill in your, your triangle. And then it says, OK, what is the sign of that angle? So based off of what I drew, the sign would be 3 because it's Sokotoa opposite over hypotenuse. So I don't even care if my triangle is to scale, if this makes any sense. I'm just filling in my triangle based off of what I know, set the hypotenuse as one, because that makes it easy. And then I finish it, find out what sine is equal to. So we get three. So if you evaluate this, your exact value would be three. And then you can verify this on a calculator. And because it does come in as 
a whole number, hopefully, <laughs> any calculator, you don't have to worry about any conversions or anything like that. Um, oops. I'm trying to type it in my calculator. And mine says three fifths. <laughs> okay. What did I do wrong here? It should be Are you guys getting the same thing on your calculators? Anyone want to verify that you also got three fifths here? <laughs> mm. I know what it is. I assume that the hypotenuse is one, but what if it's not one? So let's look at this a different way. So we got tangent of our angle equals three fourths, which yes, is sine over cosine. So let's think of this sine, which is opposite over hypotenuse. Cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. So I just canceled out the hypotenuses and I said, okay, we know, um, you know, this gives us our size, our opposite is three, our adjacent is Four, I assumed that our hypotenuse is one, but we should actually, we should not make that assumption and we should actually use the Pythagorean theorem here. That's where I got ahead of myself. So let's use the Pythagorean theorem to find our hypotenuse. So that's a squared plus b squared equals c squared. So use four squared plus three squared equals c squared. 16 plus nine, let's add it to 25. So that tells us our hypotenuse here is going to be five, square root of 25. So once we find that, then we can do our sine of the angle, which is the opposite of our hypotenuse, is three over five. So now it matches with our calculator. So this is a good, <laughs> good practice. I haven't had to do this stuff in a long time. I don't do it often, but it's good to check your calculator and be like, okay, didn't match. Where did I go wrong? And it's usually an assumption. You make an assumption and it ends up being an incorrect assumption. So let's do something similar to the right, and I'm going to be very careful that I don't make the same mistake. So we have cosine of the inverse tangent or arctan of two. So again, I'm going to just draw a label, and we're saying again, so we're just we're both are using inverse tan, just different notation. This is equal to two over one which is the sine over the cosine, so basically the opposite over the adjacent. So I know my opposite is 2, and my adjacent is 1. And so now we'll use the Pythagorean theorem to find what our hypotenuse is. So 1 squared plus 2 squared is going to equal h squared. So that's 1 plus 4 was h squared, five equals h squared, which means the square root of five is our hypotenuse. So the arctan of two is giving us the angle theta. So now the next part is cosine. We're asking for cosine of theta. What is the cosine based off of our triangle? So cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. The adjacent is one, and the hypotenuse is the square root of five. 
Now we like to rationalize our denominator. We don't want to keep it with that square root in the denominator. So we're going to multiply the top and the bottom by that square root of 5. So we get cosine of theta equals the square root of 5 over 5. And so then you can verify this or by typing in cosine of the arctan of 2. And if you have a calculator that gives you decimals, it's probably going to give you decimals out. But if you divide by the square root of 5 and get 0.2 out, then that means that we got the same thing, that we did that right. So I'm using my graphing calculator, and it told me square root of 5 over 5. So that was done correctly. Are there questions? Okay. Um, now these are very similar. These are the same idea. And these are going to be similar to some of the stuff that you would have to do in calculus. So just to give you a preview, of, <laughs> you don't have to do this in our class. I mean, you, you do it here and it's in the book, but this is more useful for when you get to calculus, but it's going to be the same idea. So on the left, I've got secant of tan of 3x. So I am going to draw a triangle. And so again, we've got that arctan of 3x as a tangent of some angle. And we have variables here, so our answers are going to have variables. But it's the same process. So this is going to be 3x over 1, because we don't have a fraction. So since that is opposite over adjacent, I can label my opposite and my adjacent. So then that gives me secant of this angle. And secant is equal to 1 over cosine of the angle. So in order to find cosine, I need to know the hypotenuse because the cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. So I'm going to use the Pythagorean theorem again. And so our hypotenuse squared is 1 squared plus 3x squared. So that's equal to 1 plus 9x squared. So we have to square both of those. And then when you take the square root, we get the square root of 1 plus 9x squared. So those are going to all be inside that square root. So once we found the hypotenuse, then we can find cosine. So cosine of this angle is 1 over the hypotenuse, adjacent over the hypotenuse. So 1 over 1 plus 9x squared. And then because secant is the reciprocal of that, we then basically take the reciprocal and we get for our answer the square root of 1 plus 9x squared. So problems like these, you can't check your answer because there's not actually numbers. But if you wanted to, you could pick numbers for x plug them in and then see if it works out. If you plugged it into the original and then you plugged it into your result. Now on the right, we've got cosecant of arc cosine of x minus 1. So we're going to work inside out. So we're saying the cosine of what angle is equal to x minus 1. So I'm going to draw triangle, 
cosine, we're going to assume cosine this is adjacent over hypotenuse. So let's set the hypotenuse as 1 and then adjacent as x minus 1 there. So next we have cosecant of that angle. And cosecant is the reciprocal of sine. So it's 1 over sine of theta. So sine uses the opposite. So we need to use the Pythagorean theorem to find our missing side so that we can uh, finish this. So my hypotenuse is 1. So that's 1 squared equals x minus 1 squared plus a squared. For all, I'll use that as could be A, could be, yeah, I want to use A. I don't want to use X because I've got X in there. That would get good too confusing. Um, and I don't want to use O for opposite because it looks like a zero. So we'll just use A. So I'm going to solve for A squared. That's our side that we're missing here. So we have one square, which is just one. And then I'm going to subtract the X minus one squared equals A squared. Oops, don't know why that switched over. So uh, we should foil this out to see if we can kind of simplify it. So it's 1 minus, and if I square x minus 1, that's x squared minus 2x plus 1 equals a squared. So that's going to give me negative x squared, I got a positive 2x, and then 1 minus 1 that cancels. So that gives me something looking a little nicer here. And then we can take the square root, have negative x squared plus 2x equals a. So I finally found my missing side. That's the side, the opposite side. So if I go back, our cosecant is 1 over sine of theta. And so sine of theta is opposite over adjacent. So that's the opposite. That's negative x squared plus 2x over, or, or I said adjacent. I meant hypotenuse. Opposite over hypotenuse. That's over 1. So cosecant is the reciprocal of that. So our answer here will be the reciprocal 1 over negative x squared plus 2x. And um, when you have things with variables in the bottom, we generally don't rationalize them. So we can leave it like that. So we only try to get rid of square roots in the bottom if there's no variables involved. If there's variables involved, we just leave it because otherwise it's not doesn't it's still going to be nasty. Are there any questions? All right. So uh, that is basically a good um, introduction to inverse trig functions and like what you need to know for going on a calculus and some things that you need to know for um, solving is just basically being able to use your calculator. And um, yeah, so do you guys have any questions on the assignments? I know that there were, there may be some questions on the assignment that I can go, that help you with. On number five, I just don't even know where to start. Okay. The other ones I've had, this one, I just, I don't even know. Okay, number five is a lot easier than you are making it out to be. So I can guarantee that. Let me open it up. Word is being really slow. And it opened on my other screen. And Okay. 
Okay, so I don't know why that says two in <laughs> my template because that says four. This really should be five. I don't know what the number is going on there. Um, so a baseball is hit at an angle theta horizontal with the ground. Suppose the initial velocity is 100 feet per second. So the initial velocity of 100 feet per second in our equation, that is, this is V naught. So for V naught, you're, you're replacing that with 100. So you'll end up with having your range. Let's says, so it says an outfight, outfielder catches the ball 300 feet from home. So that's your range. So you're basically, you're plugging in your 300 for your range. You have one over 32. You plug in 100 squared for V naught. And then you have times the sine of two theta. So you're solving for theta. And so what you need to do is actually first get the sine part by itself. So you need to get all of this junk on the other side. So you'll be multiplying. Oops, I highlighted the sign. Just this stuff. So you're going to be multiplying, doing all this stuff, and you're going to get some number over here equal to the sine of 2 theta when you try to do that. This is where the inverse trig functions come in because we want the angle. We want to get rid of the sine. We want to undo that, and we'll, we're going to be doing that by taking the inverse. So you're going to take the arc sine of whatever you have on the left and then the arc sine of the sine of 2 theta. And this arc sine and sine, those are going to be canceling out. So you're going to be just left with 2 theta here. And then you're going to have whatever you have this arc sine of over there. So on the left side, you're going to have some number. And you need to plug that in your calculator. It's not going to come out nice. And because this is a real world problem, I would use degree mode here. Because degrees make much more sense in this situation than radians. So you can use degree mode. So you're going to get some degree out when you take the arc sine of your numbers. And then that's equal to twice the angle, 2 theta. So then you just have to divide by 2. And then that will give you your theta. Does that help? Yeah, that helps a lot. <laughs> You're welcome. Are there other questions um, on the assignment? Okay. <laughs> well, thank you guys for um, coming. I really appreciate it. I'm glad that you guys were able to participate, help each other with the calculator stuff, try to figure out <laughs> how to get the calculator to do what we want. Um, if you guys run into any issues with the assignment, feel free to email me. And yeah, that's it. So I will talk to you guys later. <laughs> <laughs> Hope you guys enjoy Thank the you. rest of your day. <laughs> You're welcome. Bye.